Okay, so it's been about eight months since the release of Battlefield 2042 and we've finally gotten some new content in the form of Season 1. Now this isn't a video so much on what Season 1 has brought, so to speak. No, it's more about whether it's changed the game's direction and how it has actually shifted my opinion on the game slightly. So let's recap my feelings on the release of Battlefield 2042. I mean, I was solidly in the camp of this game isn't very good and a massive disappointment, to put it lightly. The game was somehow worse than the beta build in terms of performance and bugs. The guns didn't really work properly with atrocious hit detection and over-exaggerated bloom. It was barely playable in some cases. On top of this, there was little to no content. The grind was awful and the graphics were super underwhelming. All of this sounds really critical, right? But when the game was super hyped up by marketing and fans, the expectation goes through the roof because it was the first modern battlefield in almost a decade. Then you can really understand why the disappointment was so vocalized in the community. Of course, some people always take this a little too far and by no means do I support any of this kind of behavior, but people were really frustrated and let down. To add insult to injury, a lot of people, myself included, pre-ordered the special editions of 2042 because obviously the hype and the expectations, which again, just provides proof of why you probably shouldn't pre-order games these days. The prices were astronomical as well, like £80, $100-ish, around there, for the tier above standard edition. And then to be greeted by specialists making jokes and silly quips in a World War 3 setting, the game kind of died for a lot of people after only a few weeks. It has been hovering just above 2,000 active players on Steam for months now, which is dreadful for a huge game like Battlefield, being outclassed by its own predecessors like Battlefield 1 and 5. Since Season 1 started, it's actually had a huge jump in player count and that intrigued me enough to jump back in myself to see whether it was just a bunch of desperate Battlefield fans feeding off some crumbs of content or has the game actually resolved some key issues and begun moving forward in the right direction. Well, after a few hours into season one, this is what I found. Okay, so season one arrived and with it the biggest pull for players, actual content. The first thing that jumped out to me when I first started playing again after a fair amount of time away from the game was the new map, Exposure. I was surprised, happy almost. It was actually good. It's not great or anything. It's not like we're going to be begging for a remake in a few years or anything like this, but it's a solid map for sure. It has lanes for infantry inside and outside, but wide open areas for vehicles too. And then some areas where they blend really well. Within an hour, I actually managed to have the first Battlefield moments that I've had since the release of the game, which says a lot really. The fact that they have put this map on a 24 hour playlist is a stroke of genius too. I know it's fairly common these days with new maps and content to be in a 24 hour playlist, but even more so here as it stands head and shoulders above the rest of the Battlefield 2042 maps. Alongside the new map, however, came the Battle Pass. Now, Battle Passes are controversial at the best of times, but they do certainly work when it comes to the addictive nature of gaming and giving players something to work towards. And again, here I'm relatively impressed. I need to stress here that my bar is pretty low, however, when it comes to what I expect, but after being forced to grind the likes of Halo Infinite Battle Pass, the 2042 one is a bit of a walk in the park. This is mainly due to the way they help you progress through it. The biggest downfall for the likes of Call of Duty is that the Battle Pass is mainly down to the time played and nothing more. The biggest downfall for the Halo Battle Pass is that it's only tied to specific challenges. Well, to 2042's credit, it's actually done the best of both here. There are challenges to complete and they will give you a massive boost in progressing the Battle Pass, but general XP goes into progressing on top of that as well. This blend progression stops the players becoming frustrated, having to play in a certain way to complete challenges. So even if you don't manage to complete those challenges, you will still progress no matter what. Yes, the XP side of things can be a little bit on the grindy side, but new challenges are released weekly and they're actually pretty obtainable so far. There have been a few tough ones, but nothing ridiculous. It mainly focuses on teamwork, which is perfect, like heal 30 enemies or resupply X amount of times. And that's exactly what you want to see from the challenges, really, encouraging positive behavior. Instead of asking a player to land like a 360 no scope on a specific map at a certain time of day. Again, we're all looking at you, Halo. Sorry. So yes, the battle pass gets a big thumbs up from me. It gives you something to work towards and has relatively good content within it. Topped off with a great progression system as well. But what else? Well, sadly, that is about it. Other than two new weapons and a specialist, that's all we get from season one in terms of content, really. The weapons are fun and maybe a little overpowered as we've come to expect, but considering one of them is a crossbow, it's a little bit underwhelming. Again, subjective, but the crossbow is just a bit of a niche weapon. I imagine most players would prefer a new AR or LMG, considering we only have two in the entire game. But we get what we're given, I suppose. 
So that's the content side of things done for now then. Passable, but lacking real meaty substance. I guess that's a bit of a theme really with this game. That's not the only thing that's really changed since launch though. Some significant tweaks have been made before and after season one's release. Some key ones have gone a long way in keeping me coming back actually recently, such as the hit detection having drastically been improved. It's still not perfect. Uh, I still have a couple of clips of bullets clearly going through someone, but it's few and far between now at least. Performance has stabilized to a slight degree. I mean, I still have to play on low to get decent frames on a 3080, but at least the stutter and crashes have stopped, so that's good, right? This is now actually possible to achieve a smooth experience as before it was now an impossible at launch. And they've reduced the player counts on some game modes to keep it from being an absolute mess and to save performance even further. And one of my favorite changes is that they've actually muted the voice lines at the end of the round, so you don't have to listen to their really annoying quips anymore. Oh, and how could I forget the scoreboard? They actually have a fully functional scoreboard now, which shows the entire team's kill to death ratio, which you know, everyone was asking for since day one. I guess what I'm trying to say is that this is how the game should have released as a bare minimum. There would have still been a bit of backlash for sure, but nowhere near as much if this is how it initially presented itself. It's actually playable and has the minimum features we have come to expect. Is it worth the 80 pounds I paid for it yet? Absolutely not. Are there still things I would change? For sure. But has it improved drastically? I have to say yes. As I've pointed out many times already, the title is still far from perfect, or the game we have expected it to be, really. There are many things I would still like to see added, changed and removed. I'm still not sure this game will ever truly recover its reputation, even if they did add everything the players want, I mean, purely based on the way it released. But to have a chance, in my opinion, it needs to add at least four to five quality maps, upwards of 10 new weapons, rework the specialist into a proper class system from previous games, and really nail down on the performance and bugs. And then maybe, after a bit of time has passed, people might actually look back on this game with a little bit of fondness, as we tend to forget how the game used to be. I mean, just take Battlefield 4 and 5, for example, both launched with their own issues and are now considered great. Granted, the issues were not on this scale, but the point loosely stands. Now, that's what I hope happens at least, but what do I actually think will happen? Well, this may continue in the cynical vein I've created so far, so fair warning. They've already confirmed four seasons, but I have a sad feeling that this is all we'll be getting as EA slowly pulls the plug on the game. Each season will be the same as the last one, one map, two weapons, and a specialist. Nothing more, nothing less. Maybe a new game mode if we're lucky, and then on top of this, I feel they may throw us a few quality of life bones as well, such as reworking specialists and adding guns from Portal, and the maps as well on the regular rotation. Some of this has already been talked about in a Battlefield blog post a few weeks ago, so it seems like this may be already on its way. But that is about it, I think. I really hope I'm wrong and Battlefield 2042 can surprise us all and come back swinging and really turn this ship around rather than delay its demise. But only time will tell. So in answer to my question then, is Battlefield 2042 on the right path? Well, no one really knows. It's certainly on a better path than it was a few months ago. And we have been given a small glimmer of hope. Whether or not we find salvation in this glimmer is yet to be determined. But we're all here for the ride now, so I guess we'll see. So, if you enjoyed my ramblings and want to hear more of my opinions, thoughts, and reviews on Battlefield and many other games I've covered, then feel free to subscribe or at least hit the like button for me. You'd be doing me a massive favour and I appreciate everyone I get. But other than that, I want to hear from you. I want to hear your opinions. Let's have a discussion on this. Where do you think 2042 is going? Has Season 1 hooked you back in like it has me? Or are you still on strike like I was at launch? Let me know in the comments down below. But until next time, cheers.